Aries, welcome to your November and December 2017 Prosperity Reading. It's Raina here, and this is a reading that I do on a bi-monthly, no, that's not right, every other month basis. And I look at the astrological transits that affect your career and your money, as well as pick some oracle cards. I wrote out an affirmation for you, a prosperity affirmation. I created this myself, and for Aries, it is, I am willing to surrender to the mystery. I take inspired action and leave the details to the universe. And I am writing one for every sign based upon their characteristics. And so for your sign, Aries, you have a tendency to go after something and if you don't see initial results you're very impatient and you double down and you want something to happen you try to force the hand of the universe and you can't do that you have to do your part and then it's the art of allowing that's part of the law of attraction so being able to surrender is a very important thing. Sometimes people think surrender means that they are admitting a loss, that they're giving up. That is totally not what it means. It means that now you're being passive after initially being active and you have faith that it's going to manifest. Okay, I'm just turning the page of my notebook and tell so I because I took some notes for your sign okay well first off you're going to have a full moon in Taurus which is your second house of earned income on November 4th and so from the time I'm recording this that's coming up pretty quickly now a full moon in the second house can mean that everything comes to fruition. Your chickens come home to roost in a good way. So you put out something before and now you're reaping the harvest of whatever that is. And in some cases that may be that you're saying goodbye to something, a source of income. But for many of you, you may see a boost to your income at the time of the full moon. So keep that in mind and see if that transpires for you. You're going to have like an inordinate, inordinate amount of energy in the eighth house of other people's money in November, Aries. You're going to have the sun there, Jupiter. Venus goes there during the second week. And there's a new moon there on the 18th. <clears throat> and that is... Um, at the time of the new moon, all those other planets will also be there. So that means that a new beginning in this area of other people's money. If you're married, it could simply mean that your spouse is doing really well and they are probably out earning you maybe and you're fine with that because it's all in the family. It could be an inheritance issue. But Jupiter and Venus in the 8th house, I mean, Jupiter and Venus both can bring money. Are you kidding me? So anything that involves money that you receive, not by the sweat of your brow. So this could even be a gift of some sort. That could be coming to you sometime around the third week in November, going into the fourth week, actually. Well, yeah, no, it would be the third week. So just keep that on your radar. <clears throat> and then there's also the fact that Pluto has been in your 10th house since 2008. And so we're going on the 10th year of Pluto in your 10th house. Pluto isn't going anywhere. Pluto is going to be there until 2023. So it's totally reshaping the way that you think about you're standing in the world and some Aries people may think that they have to really compete. You are a competitive sign, but you may have had instances where that didn't end so well. So maybe you've mellowed out a little bit and maybe you realize that you don't have anything to prove 
and you're willing to be a little bit more cooperative and a little bit less me, 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 some people, it may be the type of work that you're doing. You may have started out doing one thing, and now you're doing something completely different. It's going to depend on the individual, but it's transformative. That's the whole idea of Pluto and Capricorn. I mean, in your second house, I should say. The fact that it's in Capricorn isn't really relevant beyond where it shows up in your chart. So, um, yeah, so it looks really good for you, in, especially when it comes to money that you don't earn. But even with that, in, in November, you have the full moon in the second house, so that could be good for that uh, as well. So in the spirit of what the, the kind of prosperity and career and stuff like that entails, I thought that I would use two of my decks that are connected to the earth element, which one of them is my native spirit deck, which obviously you can guess that's dealing with Native American issues. And the Native American religion <clears throat> is an earth religion. So it is connected to earth, and earth um, is connected to practical matters, like a, the pentacles in the tarot are all connected to career, money, body, things like that. And then I'm going to do the Earth Magic Oracle cards, and that's self-explanatory, more connections to the Earth. I'm going to use my, um, what's it called? <laughs> I can never think of the name of this deck. Um, not Ascended Masters, that's... Um, Although I'm not going to retire that. I, I said I was, but I'm really not because I found the, the missing card. So, oh, maybe I'll do one of, yeah, I'm going to do one of the Energy Oracle cards by Sandra Ann Taylor. But this one, what is the name of it? Well, I'm eating away my time here, aren't I? Keepers of the Light. There we go. Okay, so now I'm picking the Native Spirit. Ooh. I I said the word mystery when I was um, saying, I said, um, I forgot that affirmation. I used the word mystery, so there you go. There's some synchronicity for you. Okay, and this is the Earth Magic. I really like these cards. They're very... I, I keep getting this card, though. <laughs> Ceremony invocation. That could be for your full moon. Doing a full moon manifestation ceremony. Okay, and then the wisdom... What is it called? Ugh. Keepers of Light. Hmm. Charity, prayer, and contemplation. You know, I got this new camera and it, it it shows in my viewfinder is grainy at night so I hope it doesn't transfer as grainy when I when it's on uh, the video itself That's, that wouldn't be very nice but um, oh well one of these days I'm going to get a really high definition camera and that's going to be awesome okay so now this is the Sandra Ann Taylor Energy Oracle. These kind of seem like they go along with, okay, I don't know if this is like, rever if they read reverse cards. Door to value 31. I think they have reversed meanings. But they seem like they're kind of like tarot cards in a way. I don't know. And let me, let me just pick a card from my, Right or wait deck, just a tarot card for old time's sake. Hmm. Six of Cups. I'm going to start with this one. I believe this connects with Cancer specifically. But um, I would say, you know, that's a card of the soulmate. But also when it comes to career matters, what was the thing that you've always done? Even 
when you were a little kid. Maybe it was draw, maybe it was play an instrument from the time you were little. And those things may give you hints as to what your life purpose is. I mean your career or your life purpose, whatever you want to call it. And that can be your calling and you can parlay that into a career. So just kind of like think about that because some people really are very confused about which direction to go. And they may even be middle-aged and they may have been doing one thing for many years and are successful and don't feel like they're in the right career. So I can totally understand that. Because sometimes you fall into things and um, they're not necessarily your heart's desire. Okay, I'm going to do this um, near spirit, great mystery. It's interesting, the colors. You know, I don't usually think of the greens. I mean, that combination. <clears throat> Let me see. Great mystery. Have faith and know that you're divinely guided, even when you have doubts. Trust that you're exactly where you need to be. Believe. You've planted your seeds, now allow the Creator to do the rest. Even if you can't see into the future, have faith that the path will be illuminated and go forward. If you have any recurring challenges, turn them over to the Creator. Not my will, but thy will be done. But that's kind of like what I said also. Many Native cultures refer to the Creator as the Great Mystery. <laughs> it's the idea that Great Spirit is so vast and profound that in many ways it's unknowable. Faith is the foundation of the ability to manifest. That's, you know, that's where, where I was going with that. Um, everything was created because someone believed that it was possible. And patience is absolutely cru crucial in the application of this principle. Trust. Change can happen in a heartbeat, but some things require time. You've planted the seeds, now give them time to grow. Please be patient and know that it will happen. Whatever receives your care and attention will flourish. The journey. If you've just planted some seeds in your garden today, you wouldn't go out tomorrow and yell at them because there wasn't any fruit yet. Well, I think a, an Aries person might. <laughs> so don't dig up your seeds of faith. Remember this mantra. It's happening. Repeat this phrase periodically, especially if you have doubts, and keep going. Oh, well, that's very cool. And then I got um, the card from the Earth Magic deck, Ceremony Invoc Invocation. And you see, I think that's, a, yeah, that's crystals and candle, some kind of an altar ritual, you know. Let me see what it says. <clears throat> Not ceremony. Whether through indifference, depression, life crisis, or other manifestation of mental, emotional, or physical blockages, you have drifted from the intimacy with spirit for which you yearn. It is important to do what you can to regain an experience of spiritual power that is contained within you and all around you. Do so by conducting a ceremony, one that involves not only spirit but also material objects you consider sacred. Set up an altar in a convenient area that is apart from your usual living space. Start with representations of the four major elements, earth, air, fire, and water, and then add just a few sacred objects. Set your intention for the ceremony, such as whether the purpose is for healing, celebration, or honoring a particular earth season or cycle. Then do an invocation to call upon your spirit guides. Breathe their presence and ask these divine beings to guide you throughout the process. Trust their guidance. Feel your heartbeat and keep breathing. Breath is the key to the actual experience of spirit. And creating a ceremony is the vehicle that supports this. Okay. And of course, you know, there are a lot of people that use the full moon.
for that purpose and um, that's why even you know pagans are it's considered an earth re religion as well I'm not I'm not a big ritual person myself um, I prefer to be spontaneous I don't like to I, I really I, that doesn't resonate with me but some people are very much into it and they find it very I don't know, maybe encouraging and healing. <clears throat> okay. Charity. Let's see. I guess this is a trinity, but I only see one person. Connect with heaven, ask and you shall receive. Ooh, well that's a good one. That's the uh, one of the... Abraham Hicks books is called Asking You Shall Receive, or something like, yeah. Asking It Is Given. Faith, Hope, and Charity are trinity, trinity of archangels who de are dedicated to helping us regain our natural traits of kindness, trust, and faith in the highest good. Charity is the twin flame of archangel Chamua, I guess it is. She has a great spirit that encourages us to undertake the spiritual practices of prayer and meditation. Prayer is the way that we speak with the divine, and meditation is the way we open ourselves to receive the answers we need to hear. Some people say prayer is talking to God and meditation is listening to God. Charity is also the angel who kisses the forehead of all those who pray in support of others. She absolutely loves to see this kindness because it creates an inspirational healing wave of goodwill to the world. The powerful Archangel Charity is drawing close to you at this time because she has recognized that you have goodness in your heart and you have put others first. She brings you thanks and support. Move into prayer and meditation with regard to any decisions you have to make at this time. You're being guided to take the time to breathe and receive. Know that you will have a real surge of intuition when it's time to move forwards. Thanks, thank the angels for guiding you towards your highest good and welcome charity into the space with you. Hmm. Well, that's certainly interesting. And you can even look at it like from the idea of giving, you know, when we talk about charity. Um, one of the parts of Law of Attraction is kind of circulating um, the energy known as money or the energy known as material objects and things like that. So you don't use something instead of hoarding it, instead of keeping it when you don't need it, you donate it. Um, and that's something that I am really looking forward to doing because I... I believe in recycling and I believe in um, not just using things once but using them as much as you can because there's you know so certain things are really worthwhile and they end up in the landfill and um, you know the word charity has become almost like a dirty word like it's bad to accept help from others or that somehow it's looking down on others and that couldn't be further from the truth. It's really about realizing that um, we're all connected and the people that need something that we have and we may not even use it, I mean, there's nothing more beautiful than that. And Aries people are very generous, so that's not even an issue for somebody like you. Okay, um... The last card I got was Door to Value. That's a kind of a strange name, isn't it? Oh, and it has money, <laughs> but it was upside down. So we'll, let's see what, what it is when it's upside down. Um, I do believe, let me see. Uh, this might be a, a challenge to find that. Uh, <laughs> oops, because <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't used that uh, booklet for a long time. So... Hopefully, that was kind of, I should have, uh, I, I kind of did this on the spur of the moment and I didn't have the booklet in front of me. That would be very embarrassing if I'm not, uh, I'm not going to leave you hanging with um, 
not knowing what this represents, but you're just going to have to bear with me for a moment while I try to find it. Because it wasn't in the box, apparently. And I had just um, organized all my booklets. Hmm. That's kind of weird. Oh, here it is, right in front of me. Silly. Okay. Yeah, they do have reverse cards, so... I'll read that. Now, door to value means new beginnings in finance or career. The reverse says, this card, it's, so it's probably like Ace of Pentacles. This card reversed signifies a partial or perhaps even potentially complete closing of the door. Um, that may be that full moon in Taurus, by the way, on November 4th. The hope for new opportunity where money or career is concerned may be delayed or possibly even derailed. Do not be dis disheartened, however. This card reversed reminds you not to put all your eggs into one basket. Diversify your interests and your efforts and let your intuition guide you to the next open doorway. In the meantime, open your heart and your mind to the other sources of value in your life. Money is a commodity, but so are time, tranquility, and love. Choose to open the doors of these wonderful experiences yourself and find real value there. Affirmation. My life is opening to endless possibilities of prosperity. The river of abundance flows freely through my door, bringing me unlimited wealth. And um, Uranus is transiting through Aries. It's going to it's going to go into so it's in your sign in 2018. I can't remember the date. Um, I think it's in the spring, you know, northern hemisphere that is. But it's going to it's going to go dip back into Aries, and I, I think in 2019 is when you're going to see it just stay in in Taurus okay so with Aries with Uranus in that first house that can in and of itself mean that there are a lot of twists and turns on your life journey and with Pluto in the 10th house you know Aries people probably have been experiencing a lot of surprises and some of them may be kind of um, wake-up calls or other types of things that feel kind of intense at times but really um, this is for your highest good any of these transits that we have they're not there to torment us or keep us um, feeling defeated or anything like that they just keep us on our toes and they make sure that we are willing to cooperate that we're not insisting on having things our own way and that we are always in the eternal now moment that we're not stuck in the past or in you know just living in the future you're not stuck in the past but you're living in the future a lot of Aries people you're always thinking of what you're going to do and this is where the impatience comes in because you're always so such a visionary about what you want to happen in your future that it's hard for you I think sometimes to savor the present moment and some of these events may cause you to. I mean, think about when somebody loses their job or they get sick. Sometimes it seems like a calamity, but it forces the person to stop doing all the time. And likewise, when you have these transits, it's almost like you may get some stop signs along the way, and it feels very challenging to you because you want to, you know, you're a cardinal sign, you want to take action, and you want to see results. And it's like forcing you to meditate, forcing you to be patient and to enjoy, savor every moment and not just be always living in the future. Okay, Aries. Well, I hope you enjoyed this. And if you would like a private reading using your natal chart um, to look at some of your personal trends in money, life path, you know, life purpose, career, what have you, or love or whatever, please go to rainamoonastrology.com. The link is below. Take care. Bye.